Hello and welcome to Bob and Talk. In this video, we will review the internal line tools in the 2D window. What do they do? How do we use them? And why do we even need internal lines? So let's start with where they are. They are in the toolbar menu in the 2D window, and we can only use them in the 2D window. You can see that I have moved my toolbar on the top as opposed to the left side here in the 3D window. And if you're curious how you can change the location of the toolbar, all you have to do is go to settings, user settings, then choose user interface. And then here on the mode and toolbar, you can change the location for 3D toolbar, 2D toolbar, and you would choose the left top, right or bottom in the drop down menu here. So right now for the 2D toolbar, I have used the top. Now let's start with internal lines. All of the internal tools are right here, nestled under each other. We have internal polygon, line, shortcut G, internal rectangle, internal ellipse, and also the dart tool is here. Why? I have no idea why it's placed here. As it suggests, internal lines or any of the tools that are internal can only be used inside of the pattern. So if I clicked anywhere in the 2D window, you will get this pop-up window that says, please click within a pattern. That means that we can only use them inside of a pattern line. So let's go just in the 2D window so you can see this better. I have this skirt pattern here. If I click outside, I get this pop-up window. There's nothing I can do outside. But if I click inside of the window, then I can start creating an internal shape. As you can see, I have the polygon tool in my hand. I am left clicking once to create the shape and I can either come here and left click once and close the shape. It will synchronize and it will complete the shape. And you can see that this turned a bright yellow color. And because I have symmetric editing, it appeared on the other side of the pattern or on the other pattern. But let's do this again on this side. So I will just left click once, left click, left click. And let's say I do not want to close this shape. So I can do two things. I can either left double click and that will complete the shape and I now have this internal line shape, or I can left click, left click, left click, and when I'm ready, I can also click the return. The return stops at the very last point and completes the internal line shape. Let's go to my transform pattern tool, shortcut A. I can grab just the internal line shape and I can move it inside of the pattern and wherever I choose to place it, I just release and it will change its location. Or I can select the shape and then modify its size or rotation by playing either by grabbing the corners or grab the top, let's say. I can grab the side of it or come up here to this little circle until the two rotating arrows appear. I can left click, hold, and I can rotate to the left or right until I'm happy with my placement or rotation and then release to let the shape set. I'm gonna left click outside so you can see how these internal lines, actually internal shapes, are now nestled inside of my patterns. If I left click hold and try to take it outside, let's see what happens. I'm going to release. The shape is outside, but it doesn't mean or do anything. I can place it inside the pattern or I can right click on it and then clone as a pattern. That will create a pattern piece based off the shape that I have. This particular shape, let's see in the 3D window. Let's delete the pattern. This is what we can see here. Left click delete. These shapes do not appear anywhere in the 3D window. Yes, I was able to drag the shape outside, but it doesn't really mean or do anything outside of the pattern. So I'm gonna grab them and move them back inside my patterns. And now let's take a look and see. Here, I cannot see these internal lines because I have them turned off. So let's make sure that I have show internal lines turned on. If it's dark, then we cannot see internal lines. If I left click once, it turns blue. You can see immediately that I can now see my internal lines. With the internal polygon line, 
I can create not just straight lines, but I could also do curved lines and all of the rules for the pattern making tools apply here. I could hold the command and create a curve point and then left click one more time to complete this curve. If I want the next point to be a curve point again, I'm going to hold command on my Mac, left click once and then curve as much or as little as I like and create my curved shape. I could also left click, hold, and have the Bezier curves. I can create whatever curves I like. I'm going to do it again. Left click, hold, so I can curve this line as much as I want. And left click back into it to get rid of the second Bezier curve. I have just this one. I could complete this shape. I have now multiple points here that I can come back and modify however I like. Again, left click then hold command create a curve point at any point that you like and if i wanted to finish this line here i can click return and that will end that point we can create straight lines we can create curved lines and we've finished the line by either double left clicking or hitting the return now let's go to the next tool that is our internal rectangle and I have way too many pattern pieces here. So I'm going to delete a couple of these. So I'm going to left click and delete these lines. Let's take a look at the internal rectangle. I have the tool in my hand. I can left click and drag and create any kind of rectangular or square shape that I like. You can hold the shift so you can create a perfect square if you wanted to. When you're ready, release. And let's take a look at what else we can do with the internal rectangle. I can left click once. That will give me this pop-up window with plenty of opportunities to create whatever width or height I like. And you can see as you enter the values here, it changes immediately the shape itself. I can also replicate or create a multiple number of this particular shape, let's say two of them. And you can see that the interval, there's three inches apart from each other and the angle is 90 degree angle. So you can play with any of these. Let's say this becomes 45 degree. You can see that I came up here and I can have a different number of shapes. So I'm going to bring this to one. I can also create a particular position within the pattern itself. So I can either center that shape or I create a particular distance from the left, the right, top, the bottom. So for example, if I want this to be further away from the left side or from the bottom, that means that maybe I have very particular measurements in my pattern and I know exactly where I want to place. Maybe this is a pocket or a patch or something of that sort. So once I'm happy with this, I'm going to click OK. And that pretty much exhausts what we can do with the internal rectangle. Next is our internal ellipse, shortcut R. Again, I can left click, hold and drag and create the shape that I want. I can hold the shift and have a perfect circle. Or I can just left click once and create an ellipse by predetermined particular measurements, diameter, radius, circumference, whatever you may be comfortable working with. And I can again create a number of these. For example, let's say two or three, as many as I want. And they can be at a very particular distance. Let's say three of them. So they're right here. You can see they're very, very tiny because the circumference is 0.61. I'm going to make this, let's say, 8, and now you can see them much better. Right now I have three shapes. Interval is 3 inches, angle is 90 degree, and I can change any of these at any point. I can also choose a position of these shapes. I'm going to go back to 1 according to how I want it placed inside of the pattern. So maybe it's further away from the left side. Maybe it's lower or higher on the pattern. Whatever you would like it to be, you can control that here. Or you can just click OK, grab the shape. I'm going to grab this particular shape and I can adjust exactly where I want it to be. Maybe just by eye. And again, once I have this shape in my hand, Hand, I have clicked on it. I can also control the size of it by simply dragging. 
I can also rotate it once I hover over this particular area here with the extended circle I get the two rotating lines and then I know that I can rotate this obviously this is a circle so it makes no difference exactly where it's rotated but if it was an asymmetric shape you could do that for example here I can rotate it and you can see clearly that it has rotated those are the internal shapes that we have for inside patterns internal polygon line basically you create whatever shape you like internal rectangle you can create a square or a rectangle of your choice An internal ellipse will give you any kind of an ellipse or a perfect circle remember that these tools are used only inside of the pattern and they can be used now to create seam line or you can extract a pattern out of these how you can do that i'll show you in the next video thank you for listening consider subscribing to bobbing talk and let me know if you have any questions or any suggestions for new videos